Let's talk about India ASEAN now. Last year, one of the other momentous events that happened was that India hosted the first ASEAN India Commemorative Summit. What is a commemorative summit? Well, if a non ASEAN country hosts this summit because they celebrate their relationship with ASEAN group, and in the case of India, it was 20 years relationship. And ahead of that event, a flagship happened, ASEAN Car Rally. We'll discuss more on that on the other side. Have a look at these beautiful visuals of ASEAN India Car Rally. ASEAN India Car Rally that happened last month. Of course, it concluded last month. It was a flagship event ahead of that first ASEAN India Commemorative Summit that happened in New Delhi. And we have with us right now three participants of that car rally. A warm welcome to everyone and Happy New Year. Sandeep uh, Sharma, a very warm welcome. Nija Bhatia and Vijay Kashyap, a very warm welcome. Happy I New think uh, Nija, more than your name, it's the car number that perhaps define all of you. Car number one, is it? Yeah. So what was uh, car number one all about? What was this car rally all about? Uh, well, the car rally was basically, like you've said, uh, one of the uh, major events of Government of India to uh, celebrate uh, 20 years of India-ASEAN relations. And uh, the car rally started from Indonesia uh, and ended in Guwahati and then in Delhi with the ceremonial flag down. And uh, car number one essentially was the control car and uh, we were the main sort of pilot car for the entire uh, convoy. So it's like the, you would lead the convoy? We were leading the convoy, you yes. leading the yeah, convoy. Yeah, yeah. And the other cars have to be following that convoy in all 31 cars, Sandeep? Yeah, that's right. There were 31 cars. Uh, it's a convoy rally. So the entire race, what we call it, is it's a convoy race where car number one is the first car which would lead the entire rally and the rest of the cars would be following to it. Right. And car number 31, which is the car which I was driving, was the last car which is called the sweeper car. And 
and my responsibility was to make sure all the cars are as per the convoy. Right. Well, we see those visuals there. That was the flag of uh, at Indonesia. And uh, so first stop was Indonesia. What was the route from there on? From Indonesia, we uh, came to uh, Singapore and then Singapore onwards by road to India. Okay. So ASEAN is the Association of Southeast Nations group and it is the 10 member group and then you have India. What, why would you have a car rally? You know, it looks very sporting. What was the overall objective? I think to show the entire world that uh, India is very well connected with the ASEAN uh, region, the entire region, all the countries in ASEAN. Okay, and this was a joint effort uh, which was organized by Ministry of External Affairs, Government of India and CII. Nita, you are from CII. Tell us more as to how this people to people contact can get the message across the region. See, we, we are very well connected with the ASEAN. Our trade links are very strong. We are doing about $80 billion worth of trade uh, between India and ASEAN. Civilizationally, culturally, ethnically, we are very well connected with this uh, region. And uh, India, as you are aware, is also part of the ASEAN in terms of being a dialogue partner. And I think symbolically it was very important to show that beyond the G2G relations and the G2B, which is a government to business relations, there's more to uh, it. In the, it's the people on the, you know, the common man in each country which is more connected and they are the ones who form the connectivity. So I think this rally was more symbolic towards that. Uh, we wanted to promote uh, tourism, we wanted to promote trade investment, we wanted to promote people to people contact. And in the people, the youth was most important. So I think we reached out to the youth quite a lot. And uh, I think that was the primary objective, really. For and that even as you, uh, the, the ceremony was happening in the flag of ceremony at Indonesia, we also got to see the cultures of different members of ASEAN. Say, if we were to focus on Indonesian culture, what was it all about? See, the, each country has its own culture. And uh, if you put together, they're very similar. You know, it's it's pretty close to their own way of uh, how the country works, and if you see the dances which they perform, it's more like uh, it's more on the cultivation how the country used to do at some period of time, which has moved into their culture. And most of the dances which we saw on the way, whether it was Indonesia or whether it was uh, Malaysia or whether it was uh, Cambodia, it was more related to how a cultivation is happening in the country in old days, and you know, a, a man and a woman dancing, doing some cultivation or fishing as compared to, you know, things around that country. So the flag off that happened at Indonesia was from Yogyakarta. That's right. And uh, from there on, it was it like, what was the stopover? Did you knew the route? How much uh, did you <coughs> drive in kilometers? Who drove? Because I believe there were four people in every car. Yeah, that's right. In Indonesia, the total rally ran around 170 kilometers, which is within within the country. But Indonesia is the only country which was not land connected with the rest of the convoy. Okay. So when we started from Indonesia, we reached to the end point, and from there we flew to Singapore, which was the place after which the entire rally was on the land. Okay. And tell me more about the vehicle needs, because uh, even as we saw those visuals. Uh, all of them looked the same vehicle. Tell us more as to what was the vehicle all about. I think uh, what we really wanted to showcase uh, was one, of course, to take an Indian manufacturer, auto manufacturer. And uh, Mahindra had very kindly uh, agreed to give us all the cars, uh, 31 cars for the uh, rally. And uh, essentially, uh, like, like you said, it was a piloted convoy. And each country had two teams uh, and four people per car. And uh, I think the Mahindra vehicles were very popular. Uh, I mean, the Tatas and the Mahindras are the you know two brand names which are known uh, globally. And uh, I think these cars were very welcome uh, across uh, the, the countries that we went through. And I think the participants love to drive it because I mean they found it to be a world class SUV. So, four participants in every car, did you drive all the drive in the beach beach? Each country ne nominate kiye the art log, and these were all people, prominent people from uh, various walks of life. Koi India se jaise member of parliament the, uh, kafi media se the, uh, different countries se, and uh, each, I mean, uh, car had four people, so they used to take turns in driving. So they were all essentially not necessarily all rally participants or rally uh, enthusiasts. 
there were general people like you and me who were interested in participating so if we have and some viewers right now and they are getting this innovative idea that car rally could be a very powerful people to people contact measure if they were to participate in future car rallies do they get in touch with cii how does it happen well actually this was more a g2g initiative a government to government initiative and we left it to the governments in each country really to uh, nominate or decide who these prominent uh, individuals would be because i mean you have a limitation on numbers everybody wants to join i would love to if i wasn't part of it <laughs> so uh, i think it was uh, more the governments had nominated out they had reached out to their motor federations or rally enthusiasts and other people who were interested and uh, that's how the teams were formed like in myanmar we had a very popular actress and a pop singer from myanmar so i mean there are people from different walks of life different walks of life yeah. so after the flag off at indonesia and you saw that cultural glimpses there as well the ceremonial flag off then happened at singapore yeah so uh, what was it all about the ceremonial flag off in singapore i think in singapore uh, uh, the government of singapore basically uh, they have selected a venue which is world famous f1 pit uh, for us also it was a different kind of venue so okay. so it's a different kind of uh, feeling actually once you are there then you can feel it those so you joined the convoy from singapore onwards yeah that's right so what was special about that stage when the ceremonial flag off happened from singapore oh it was uh, it's a fantastic experience you know getting a flag off done from a f1 pit which is normally famous for doing a formula 1 racing you felt like a formula 1 racer <laughs> actually yes you know because it was you know we started from the pit lane and we started on the grid which is there made for the formula 1 cars and uh, and it was nice show there were a lot of kids there were a lot of pomp and show which was there as you can see uh, which was there when we started from singapore And so every country is carrying their own national flag and there is camaraderie the people gathered to see that yeah there were a lot of school kids uh, which had come down to see the the flag of ceremony which was done out of singapore and this is some science park that you're crossing yeah that's right we passed through the entire uh, the, the so called ring road of uh, singapore and we went towards malaysia uh, crossing the border i uh, also next stop after singapore was malaysia we entered malaysia and the next stop for us was a place called ipo in malaysia that's right okay which is around 865 kilometers from singapore so at one stretch how many kilometers <laughs> would you drive before the driver said oh i want some rest well it was not that driver would said <laughs> i need rest it was all planned in such a fashion that uh, depending upon the road conditions and the traffic conditions uh, at times we were uh, doing over 200 kilometers in a single stretch but that was the first day when we drove the maximum we drove 865 kilometers in a single day okay yeah. so like you said uh, there were <coughs> two teams from every country so 10 asian nations you got 80 people and four people in one car all in all 31 so what kind of spirit was there team spirit most of them you would have been meeting for the first time when you met them in indonesia by the time you were at singapore by the time you were crossing to the third stage in malaysia was there a bonding that you felt on the ground i think uh, we've formed a kind of friendship which is i think going to last a lifetime now you spent about 22 days on the road uh, you've been through various locations you've shared you know your stories you're spending so much time together you've been together through eating local food enjoying the cultural uh, evenings i think uh, people generally initially of course nobody knew each other but today uh, we are a month away from the rally and we are still in touch with each other and i think we'll continue being so so yeah and this is irrespective of which country you came from so absolutely yeah. and from singapore the convoy for the third stage then entered to malaysia you had the visas for all these countries so there was no problem the drivers from different nationalities entering into malaysia uh just to give you an idea it's taken us about 1 year to really prepare this whole rally what you see happening in 22 days took a year uh, of planning and preparation uh, we worked with the various governments uh, for example the visas everything was already uh, issued in advance we had an advance team that was going ahead of the convoy into various border points and getting the stamping done for the uh, passports the okay, 120 so no one passports. you know while you travel through these as we see these visuals there was no problem per se on logistics not part. at all not, not at, at all. all can you recognize your car here from sandeep 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> it must be somewhere, right? Yeah, it will be. But any recollection? It happened not so long back, although we are in the new year. Yeah, we're just crossing into Malaysia. I can easily see. We just crossed uh, Singapore border and moved into Malaysia, and that was the first cultural program we saw in Malaysia. What about, what about the cultural differences? Did you saw any any food problems? जी मैंने ये खाना है खाने के लिए कुछ अलग ऐसा कल्चर आपको लगता है कि आसियान भारत की जब बात हो रही है बीस साल के रिश्ते हैं बहुत स्ट्रॉन्ग ओवरलैप्स हैं आई थिंक बहुत स्ट्रॉन्ग ओवरलैप्स हैं खाने की थोड़ी दिक्कत है खासकर उन लोगों को जिनको नॉन वेजिटेरियन से थोड़ा परहेज है बाकी खाना इतना कुछ मुश्किल नहीं है सारे रास्ते में मैं एक वेजिटेरियन हूँ तो मेरे को कोई दिक्कत नहीं हुई तो दिन भर ड्राइव करने के बाद फिर शाम को चर्चा होती थी कि जी आज डिफिकल्ट टेरेन बिकॉज हम देख रहे थे कुछ रोड्स तो बहुत स्मूथ है बट आई एम श्योर सम ऑफ द टेरेन मस्ट है या एग्जैक्टली चर्चा एक्चुअली अगले दिन की ज़्यादा होती थी कि उसमें मुश्किल कितना है और कितना आसान है क्योंकि जो चीज़ निकल जाती है वो तो देन यू ट्राई टू लर्न कि क्या गलती हुई क्या उसको इम्प्रूव कर सकते हैं अगले दिन बट नॉर्मली अगले दिन की चर्चा होती थी कि कितना टर्न मुश्किल है कितना ट्रैवल करना है कितने बजे सुबह उठ के ट्रैवल करना है वो ज़्यादा जिक्र में रहता है ऐसा भी होता था भी कि आप मलेशिया पहुँचे और गाड़ी तो जा रही है कॉन्वर्स चल रहा है आपने कहा जी मलेशिया में तो चलिए ट्विन टावर्स क्यों ना देख के जाएं ये आइडिया अच्छा है मगर ऐसा होता नहीं है क्योंकि जो एक साल की प्रिपरेशन हुई है उसने पूरा यही प्लान किया है कि कहाँ जाना है और कब जाना है एंड इन दैट डू यू प्लान दैट सम यू नो माकी माइल स्टोन यू नो लाइक ट्विन टावर्स फॉर मलेशिया और इन सिंगापुर दैट यू ऑल्सो हैव दैट ऑन द रूट See, I'll tell you what we had. Like I told you, we did a year long of preparations, yes. and what we done was as the organizing team, we had done a recce uh, visit to each country on the actual route, and our technical partners, auto car, were with us, and we did a full GPS route mapping. We identified in each uh, location where would the stop be, how long the stop would be, khana kaha khayenge, mm-hmm. night halt kider hogi. होटल कौन से में रहेंगे होटल में पार्किंग होगा कि नहीं थर्टी वन का वॉशिंग फैसिलिटी होगा कर मैं मान नहीं सकता so, नीरजा कि आप 20 दिन जो है 8000 किलोमीटर कराए 10 कंट्रीज में और कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं आई कोई चुनौती नहीं आई ऑनेस्टली वी वर ऑल शॉक्ट आर सेल्स वी कैन बिलीव इट इवन टिल डेट देर वॉज नो ब्रेक डाउन देर वॉज एब्सोलूटली नो प्रॉब्लम एट द बॉर्डर्स देर वॉज नो प्रॉब्लम ऑन सिकनेस लकली ऑन द रैली एंड आई थिंक इट वॉज टू गुड टू बी ट्रू Too good to be true. Good so to all be. in all, the convoy when started from Indonesia, you passed through eight member countries of ASEAN. Hanji. Eight member countries. Hanji. Hanji. And how long did you stay in Malaysia? Uh, just one night. Just one night. One night in Malaysia. So usually uh, a night or a couple of nights in every country. I think uh, Thailand was the longest because we uh, did Thailand in the first stretch. Uh, we did four nights and then we re-entered Thailand from Cambodia and then we did another two nights there. So that was the longest uh, stretch in the entire journey. After that, I think Myanmar was Myanmar about four was nights. Singapore was one night, of course, and Malaysia was one night. Okay. Uh, Cambodia was, I think, two three nights. nights. Three, three, three nights. Yeah. Okay, two nights. But uh, you know, are you an no. avid traveler? Otherwise, you love traveling. I love traveling. You love traveling and driving. And driving. Yeah. But tell me, even as we focus on sports in Venice's edition of Good Evening India, and we don't only say that you become an elite sports person like Parimarjan Negi or you know Anand. We can 